Hey guys, I'm Sifu Dung and thanks for joining me today. I hope you guys are all safe and well. And before we get started, I have a special shout out and thank you to all of you. Actually, I wanted to do this when we crested a thousand subscribers and as I turned around, we're already at just a little over 1300, which is completely humbling. As I started this experience, I didn't know if this would even take off, if it would go anywhere. But at 1300 subscribers, I'm truly humbled, but I'm also truly inspired to make better and more content for you guys. So if you haven't already, make sure that you leave a comment and let me know what you guys may want to see or what I can possibly do and what we can explore. But Hopefully we're starting off the new year right, starting it off strong, started on the right foot, because today we're talking about weaponry again. Now, today we're going over one of Kung Fu's as well as many other martial arts styles, most basic weapon, which is the staff. So, like always, we got some training to do, so let's get to work. All right, now, when we're talking about staff, we basically have two basic different styles of staff that we deal with in Kung Fu. One is a double-ended and one is a single-ended. Now, typically a double-ended staff is even all the way through. It's a little bit shorter as well because you're gonna be using both ends. Now, in a single-ended staff, typically one end is a little bit wider and it tapers down on the other end. It's also a little bit taller. Now, in this drill, we're actually going to be using the single-ended staff. Even though the techniques will actually work with both staffs, we're just going to use single-ended for right now. So when we're looking at single-ended staff, again, we want to utilize the distance of the staff, which means we want to use that length. It makes no sense to have a long staff and only use this much of it. Otherwise, what the hell are we doing? So with this, we use a single-ended grip. Now, a single-ended grip is also referred to as an over-under grip. It's typically around shoulder width apart. Now, one of the things that we want to do is we want to make sure that the bottom is flush with our palm on this side. And on the other end, it's going to be basically a fist. Now, this will change as we go through some of the different techniques. But the first couple techniques we're going to be going through is going to be using this style of grip, and we're going to be utilizing uh, the length of the weapon. All right, now, the techniques we're gonna be working on today, as we said, we're going to be working on our four corners, which are gonna be, the four techniques are gonna be Pete, Pao, Na, and Pa. So when we look at this, it's going to be Pete, Pao, Na, and Pa. All right, so we're gonna be elaborating into those techniques. We're gonna break them down and we're gonna show you how they work. All right, so for our first technique, we're gonna deal with them. one of the first corners, which is peat, okay? Pronounced like the name. Now, when we're using peat, we're gonna be utilizing a single-ended grip, single-ended staff. So we're gonna start off by bringing our left leg back, right leg forward. Now, depending on how much training you wanna do, will decide the depth of your stance. So if you really want to get down into it, you want to hunker down at a square horse, okay? Depending on how knees feel, ankles feel, that's up to you, okay? But if you want to push it, you want to really work on getting that low in that square horse, and then it also works on your waist a little bit more. Now, the basic position of Pete, again, we're going to start off in that single-ended grip. What we want to do is we want to extend our index finger out. Now, from this position, we want to be able to lift, and you'll notice that I actually coil my hand inward slightly. Now, from here, I'm going to rotate and press out to the corner. So I'm pushing out to my right corner. Now, in this, peak can be used for a block or a strike. So as we go from this position, we're going to lift and press. Now, again, you'll notice I'm keeping this square horse. I'm utilizing the waist. Again, lift and press. Now, if I want to use it as a strike, or I want to be able to advance into someone, I want to use a dingy mat and press inward. I want to lunge and press inward as well. So again, it can be used as a block or strike. Okay, corner number two is going to be pow. Okay? Pow is typically struck with the end, 
looking more towards a higher type of strike with towards the temple, towards the head, but it also can be used to intercept or deflect another high type of an attack. So the way we're going to do this from here is we're going to go ahead and start off in just a relaxed position and we're going to go ahead and step back, very similar to how we were before. Now with POW, what we want to be able to do is we were going to utilize the single ended grip again. Our right hand is going to be a little bit loose because we want to be able to let that staff slide. What we're going to do is push that back hand up towards our armpit. Now we still have that index finger out. And as we're going to do is we're going to strike to the upper left corner. So if I'm going from this position is I want to push it up to the armpit and strike towards the upper left. Okay. So again, we're going to swing and we want to let that slide. Now, when we do that and it gets to that point where it's at the armpit, that's when the right hand wants to tense and it wants to stabilize that staff. That's what's going to send the energy to the tip of the staff. Now, if we put it together in our combination of uh, the four corners, we're going to start off in our square horse. We're going to rotate to our peat. And now from this position, we're going to push it up and we're going to hit our pow. So again, we reset, we lift and curl, rotate to peat, turn to pow. Again, we're going to lift, rotate to peat, turn to pow. Okay, now for corner number three and four, we're actually going to tie them together. They go together really well, classic combination in the staff. So we call it na and pa. So the way I like to refer, uh, remember it is NP. N comes before P in the alphabet, so we're looking at it. N comes before P. So the way we're going to do this from this position is we're going to go ahead and start off in a front position or a kind of a mild square horse posture. Now, we're going to turn and we're going to sweep to the lower left. Now you'll notice one of the things that the right hand is extended. This is going to be my stabilizer. The action actually comes from the back hand as it rotates. So as I turn, my fist rotates up by my ear. I keep the elbow and the shoulder relaxed and this allows a whipping motion to that lower left. Now this can be used for a lower block or it can be used to strike toward lower extremities like the ankles and the legs. From this position to rotate into our next position, we're gonna take our front hand, rotate it so not only it turns it downward, but it over rotates so that way the back of the palm is now facing the opposite direction and the staff itself is kind of hugged up next to your body. From here, we just turn to the opposite corner and we have pa. So again, we have na sweeping to the lower left, we rotate, we turn pa to the lower right. Again, na to the lower left, rotate the palm all the way and just turn the waist to the lower right. Now, if we're gonna put this together in our four corner combination. We're gonna start back into our square horse. We're gonna rotate up and out for Pete. We're gonna bring the hand in and to the corner for pow. Now from here, we're gonna circle around as we circle that hand up to the ear as we hit na to the lower corner. Now rotate the palm and turn the waist over. Now we have pa. From there we'll reset. So we're gonna go peat, pow, na, pa. So for stance training as well as waist training, we wanna keep that square horse. So we reset, we go peat, pow, na, pa. All right, and that is our four corner training. Okay, so there's a handful of techniques that we can take specifically just from this combination alone. So the first couple we're gonna do, we're gonna take it from the combination and then we're gonna show a couple of variations with it as well. So with the first one, we have the peat and the pow. So now in the actual combination we did is we stayed stationary with peat and pow. Now that will work. Now, if someone's of course, traditionally attacking you, you would want to advance with that peat, rotate outward. Now this can be used again for blocking another weapon or blocking a strike. From this position, you would actually want to come to the side a little bit more and extend the angle of that pow, really maximizing the angle and extension of your weapon. 
All right, so for this technique, we're gonna be using the peep and the pow. So as your attacker comes in, what we're gonna do is we're gonna step forward. We're gonna rotate that palm again for the peep. We wanna use that as a bridging technique. So as that attack comes forward, we're gonna step in off the center line and bridge that attack. So from here, we wanna block, knock it to the side. Now this gives us enough opening where we're gonna take a small step and we're gonna reach in for the pow, okay? Or striking to the temple. All right, now the next one from the combination is the na and the pa. So this, of course, as we talked about before, this is attacking or blocking around the lower extremities area. So with the first position, if we were to step, like in our combination, we have na, which goes to the left, and we have pa that goes to the right. Now, of course, if somebody's standing nicely in front of you, you can attack one, two, or block one, two. You can also, again, change the angle on this position where if someone's stepping off the center line and you would reach and extend and attack or block or you can also again follow in with the different stance and follow up with that paw as well all right now for the na and pa technique so as your attacker comes in what we're looking at again is lower strikes or lower blocks so from this position here we're going to go ahead and we're going to step in as we go for that na blocking sideways to the left now from here we're going to go to a cat stance as we do a pa now that can be also used to block lower strikes from here in addition to that we're going to add actually another strike which is going to be a circle around and a sot position all right now, we can get into a couple of these combinations and also variations of these combinations with mixing and matching some of the movements. So instead of just going across, lower and higher, we can also, in this case, we're gonna be going diagonally. So we're gonna be using pa and pow. So typically from here, we can do a pa, we can get to it in a couple different ways. We can go pa as we cross behind here in a stealing stance or what we call a tauma. So in this position, I may want to step to the side, blocking here or even striking, okay? I can also use this in an advancing position where I actually advance forward and do the same motion. So for this technique, we're gonna go ahead and cross behind and we're gonna do our pa here. Now from here, we're gonna take the right foot, retreat back. We're actually gonna lean back to a cat stance position and reach forward with the pow. Okay, so again, we're going to cross behind pa, now, pow. One more time, we're going to go pa and pow. Okay, now with our next one, this is one of those variations that we talked about. So we're going to combine the pa and the pow. So as that attacker comes in, we're gonna go stepping back, absorbing, we're gonna paw. We're gonna go low for that block. Now from here, we're gonna combine it with that pow. So we're hitting from one angle, and now we're gonna step and strike to the opposite angle. All right, now the next technique we're gonna go over is gonna be the na and the peep. Now this is gonna be actually going the opposite corners. So from this position, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna step in with that na. All right, again, blocking or even attacking down to the lower left. From this position here, we're gonna step forward and lunge as we peek. All right, so again, we're gonna go na and peek. Now this position of na, depending if you're being attacked uh, with a weapon or whatever, you can step back into this as well as well as stepping forward, depending on proximity and how much room you're gonna need. So this one again, we're gonna go na, and then we're gonna step to the side and peek. Now, there, of course, there's different variations in stepping. We can also step na, stepping in at an angle, stepping in again as peek as we go to the corner. So there's a lot of play room here. The biggest thing is getting comfortable with the positions themselves. Now, for our second variation, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be utilizing the na and the peat. So as your attacker comes in, we're gonna to step to the side, pairing that technique right to our left. Now that's gonna open them up as we step forward, we step in into a dingy mop, bow stance, pressing in and peat. 
Well, I hope you had fun with these techniques and I hope you got value from this video. Hopefully this helped you learn some basic movements, but also maybe expand on what you may already know. Now, like everything in Kung Fu, this is just the tip of the iceberg. So if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, and I'll see you on the next one. So if I have a long weapon, it makes no sense for me to use this much of it with the back end hanging out like this. So I want to be able to use this motion and use the distance to my advantage. Otherwise, what the hell is the point of using it, right? Right. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab a couple techniques. We have...